In an unfortunate episode, there is another heartbreak for India. Vinesh Fogart, India's top wrestler's disqualification case has been dismissed by the International Court for Arbitration of Sports. This plea has been dismissed today. There will be no silver medal for Fogart. Fogart had in fact uh, uh, pleaded for a joint silver medal. CAS has uh, dismissed Vinesh Fogart's plea. She was, remember, disqualified for being uh, just 100 grams uh, over the permissible weight of 50 kgs. Uh, the Indian Olympic Association, meanwhile, has released a statement after Fogart's uh, plea got dismissed. It has said, the body has said that significant implications for Vinesh and sports community. It has also said that it is shocked and disappointed at the decision. And it has said that it is exploring further legal actions in this regard. I have my colleague Osama who tracks sports very closely for us. Uh, Osama, this in some ways was expected, but there, there was still a glimmer of hope, uh, you know, thinking that she could be bringing home that uh, silver medal, considering it was so important uh, to her and everybody else. Tell us, uh, how significant is this decision and what is the rationale behind the court deciding something like this? Well, Basuda, uh, first of all, uh, just, uh, just to highlight the fact that uh, how stringent and... Uh, uh, how stringent these regulations are that if you fail uh, uh, fail uh, on any level uh, by the barest of margins, you're not going to uh, be allowed to either compete or uh, appeal against uh, your disqualification. And that is what has happened with uh, Vinesh Pogart as well. Now, the Court of Arbitration for Sports, uh, it has, like you mentioned, it has uh, dismissed Vinesh Pogart's appeal uh, against her disqualification uh, for being uh, just 100 grams overweight, uh, like I said, the barest of margins, and uh, uh, also the withdrawal of her uh, silver medal. So uh, she had initially appealed for two uh, on two accounts. One was uh, to let her compete in the finals, which the Court of Arbitration of Sports immediately at that particular moment uh, said no to. Uh, they said that they are not going to entertain that. Uh, and uh, the second one, which was uh, for her to be awarded a joint silver, uh, that was something that uh, the CAS, uh, the Court of Arbitration for Sports, uh, had considered to hear. And uh, uh, for uh, on behalf of uh, Vinesh Pogat and the Indian Olympic Association, Harish Salve, as well as uh, Vidush Patinghania, both of them formed these arguments for her on her behalf uh, for the court to hear. But uh, uh, remember, uh, this uh, application, uh, which is filed by Vinesh Pogat, uh, uh, it uh, it has now been dismissed on uh, accounts uh, of being overweight by just 100 grams. Vinesh, uh, remember, she weighed 49.90 kg on the morning uh, ahead of her first round bout, which is well within the permissible limit. And uh, uh, throughout the day, uh, while she had uh, her three bouts, uh, she was well within her uh, uh, weight limit. And that is also one of the arguments that uh, her counsels had uh, uh, presented in front of the court and said that, look, uh, uh, she might have been overweight on uh, the second day uh, for before the weigh-in, uh, but uh, she competed within the weight limit, and that should be considered. To which uh, the court has said that uh, uh, this is not going to uh, this right. is basically going to set the wrong precedence if uh, they give it in favor of Vinesh Bogart because there are other similar cases, right. uh, and uh, that is uh, that is what uh, the other. Uh, athletes uh, will look up to and say that, look, you made a decision on uh, the basis of something like this, and this is what uh, we are also looking at. So that is what, uh, that is the basis of her uh, uh, right. rejection of her plea. Right. Thank you, Osama, for giving us those crucial details. Vinesh Fogart's plea has been dismissed. She had, she had uh, pleaded for uh, a joint silver medal at Paris Games 2024. Moving on to the other top story tonight, the latest in the horrific rape and murder case in Kolkata, where a junior doctor was killed while on duty last week on Friday. Remember, this 31-year-old junior doctor had gone to the seminar room to rest, but her body was found brutalized. In fact, the autopsy showed that she was raped before she was murdered. The anger and outrage over this case has become a movement across the country with several doctors coming out taking to streets demanding better security for doctors and justice for the victim today the cbi took over this investigation into uh, this particular case uh, it was it was a direction by the calcutta high court they will also focus on whether it was a case of gang rape and if there was any cover up a forensic team in fact visited the hospital while the accused was taken for a medical checkup the CBI at the crime scene after taking over investigation of the R.G. Kerr Medical College and Hospital rape and murder case. We have taken over the investigation. First, allow us to see the police. The okay. official team medical has come team, from Delhi. Team. Medical team, everything has come from Delhi. We are
students continue to protest over lack of security at their workplace and justice for the victim. After the Calcutta High Court handed over the case to the CBI on the parents' appeal, this is what the CBI will investigate. Is this a case of gang rape as the family alleges in their petition? Are there more than one person involved like the family alleges? Was there an attempt to shield any other accused with an improper autopsy as the family alleges in their petition? The police say both the inquest and post-mortem were done in a very transparent manner. While the inquest was done in front of a judicial magistrate with the parents present, the post-mortem was done in the presence of a judicial magistrate and was videographed. A copy of the post-mortem report was also shared with the parents. Meanwhile, the BJP and the left continue to attack the ruling Trinamool Congress. Pure is mamle ko rafa dafa karne ki sazish Mamta Banerjee ne hi rachi. Very clear case of BJP using a heinous crime and milking this issue to garner some sort of political mileage. This as protests continue across the country. Resident doctors at this protest march at Ames Hospital in Delhi is that are we really free at this point even you know it's been 77 years of independence tomorrow and even then with such a case that has erupted and has taken the entire country in a chokehold what is it what lies ahead not just for the doctors fraternity but for women's safety as well we have got already independence but there is no independence here i don't see anything we are fighting for a cause we are fighting for safety and security in hospital nationwide when it comes to provide safety and security we want concrete resolution we want concrete act we want concrete bill and complete resolution, complete assurance for the safety and security for all the doctors throughout the country. In Uttar Pradesh, medical colleges in Lucknow decided to step up the protests. Strike is continuing because not because whether the demand is accepted or not in the internal level. The strike is being continued because we want swift justice for docs up. The outrage over the incident at Archikor Medical College and Hospital and the subsequent protests are no longer limited to Kolkata, West Bengal or even just the medical fraternity. It has become a much larger issue with citizens' movements demanding safety for women at the workplace. And on the eve of Independence Day, women in Kolkata will descend on the streets to reclaim this basic right, safety at the workplace. With camera person G.D. Shankar in Kolkata, Saurabh Gupta, NDTV. Meanwhile, politics over this episode has intensified. Rahul Gandhi, Congress leader and also the leader of opposition, has slammed Mamata Banerjee's government. Remember, TMC is part of the larger opposition India bloc. Rahul Gandhi has said that there are efforts that were that we being made to protect the accused instead of delivering justice to the victims. And this has raised serious questions about the hospital and local administration. West Bengal Chief Minister and TMC Chief Mamata Banerjee has hit back now and she has asked people not to politicize any deaths and she has also said that she took every possible step and that the accused was arrested within hours of the police getting into the case. Oshikar kutte parven na pori bar. Ami binit ko LCP ke niye ge chila mamar shate. Jodi baba mar kono shonde ho thake tadet thake tar kotha shonbar jo naami praya ghanta chilam. Ami etau bolle chilam. Jethi ko naamo dil ekta korto po ache. Meethi to ar firiyash be na. Or naame jodi apna ra kichu korte chhan korte paren ja taakalag be ami debo. Ekta compensation. Meanwhile, Kolkata police today took to social media to dispel rumors regarding the case. They have clarified that reports of Kolkata police informing the family of the victim about a possible suicide are false. The family confirmed that the call did not come from Kolkata police. That's what uh, cops said. Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee hit back at all the allegations, claiming that her government had reacted in instantly. 
and she had taken all actions in the doctor's rape murder case even as uh, she alleged that a smear campaign was against was being run against her by the cpm and the bjp time for a short break more news and updates on the other side Welcome back. A new long-range glide bomb called Gaurav, developed by the Defence Research and Development Organisation in conjunction with partners including Adani Defence and Aerospace, has successfully hit a uh, target more than 100 kilometres away after being dropped from from an Indian Air Force fighter jet. Why could this be a game changer for the Indian Air Force? My colleague Vishnu Shom has the details. Well, let me explain what this is all about. Now, this is the Gaurav glide bomb. Uh, it's been successfully tested, a series of tests on, uh, on the ground, captive tests as they're known, and then finally the weapon has been launched successfully. It struck a target more than 100 kilometers away. This is a one-ton bomb. It's been developed by the Defense Research and Development Organization, along with Adani Defense uh, and Aerospace. Let me give you a few more details of what this is uh, all about and why it's significant. Firstly, the test that actually took place was of the glide bomb, which was dropped from a Sukhoi 30 fighter jet, as you can see. It then, uh, it then went on for a, a range of approximately 100 kilometers, hitting a target with pinpoint precision. Remember, this is a bomb. It's not a missile. It doesn't have a motor of its own. It relies on aerodynamics. It relies on its winglets. It relies on the trajectory at which it was dropped. And it relies extensively on inertial navigation. I'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, the bomb is important for India for a variety of reasons. It's a one-ton bomb. It can carry a variety of warheads. It can be used in a mission like what the Balakot mission was all about, when India struck Pakistani terror camps deep inside Pakistan. On that occasion, spice bombs made by Israel were used. Over here, we can actually use one of these weapons. It can hit a variety of targets, including hardened structures, which can be uh, destroyed. Let's give you a few more details uh, of this. How does it actually work? Well, it relies on pinpoint accuracy. How does it do that? It's got very advanced navigation systems on board, a mix of global positioning systems and inertial navigation systems, which actually ensure that it gets to the right target and strikes it uh, with accuracy. So, um, you know, and that's what I was talking about, this, the, the navigation system. It's been under development for a while. It's been developed by the DRDO. But the key point over here is that with this test, India is now in a position to actually manufacture this. So the DRDO and Adani Defense have completed the trials. And the next stage, of course, would be when this is inducted in numbers, which is why the key point, like in so many other defense issues, serial production of weapon systems can begin when there are significant orders which come in. But at this stage, this weapon has been proven to be successful. It is something which can enhance the firepower of the Indian Air Force greatly. Well, in an effort to give a further boost to partnership, India and the U.S. signed a landmark memorandum of understanding which will enable the MSMEs of the two countries to participate in global markets and foster trade. SEL Das was the secretary of the MSME in India and Isabel Casalas Gasman, who is the administrator, small business administration in the United States of America, signed the MOU here in New Delhi. India and US have been a trade partner for very long and the trade ties between the two countries have only prospered over the years. And today, the Small Business Administration of the Biden government has signed an MOU with the Indian Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprises. To share more details about what is the significance of this MOU and how it will benefit both India and US, I am joined here by Ms. Isabel Guzman, the head of Small Business Administration of the Biden government. Thanks, Ms. Guzman, for joining us to share the details about this MOU. Uh, my first question is that uh, 
what are uh, what is a general assessment of the indian small and medium enterprises in the united states we're so excited to see this growing strong partnership between the us and india and i know that president biden and prime minister modi uh, back in 2023 when they met in the dc area uh, committed to continued growth in this area especially as we you know share values around democracy and uh, and ensuring that there's strong economic prosperity prosperity opportunities for both of our countries. Uh, and so as I look towards opportunities for our countries to work more collaboratively together, uh, clearly small business needs to be part of that answer. Uh, the MSMEs, that uh, micro, small, medium enterprises uh, that dominate both of our uh, e economies really are critical to ensuring that we can strengthen into the future. What is the significance of this MOU uh, which you have just signed with the Ministry of MSME and uh, how it is going to benefit both India and US? President Biden and Prime Minister Modi had committed to ensuring that one of the deliverables from their engagement in 2023 was going to be the uh, signing of an MOU uh, between the U.S. Small Business Administration and the Ministry of Micro, Small, Medium Enterprises to try to advance and expand collaboration around uh, global marketplaces, ensuring that businesses in both countries uh, could better leverage trade opportunities abroad between our countries. Our trade relationship is strong and we want to continue to see that growth into the future and it presents a huge opportunity for businesses in India as well as businesses in the US uh, and so this signing of the MOU is historic in terms of SBA's engagement and ensuring that uh, we leverage these opportunities for our you know, more than 34 million small businesses in the United States. You spoke about women entrepreneurship and you, uh, you talked about that how U.S. or this MOU particularly which you have signed with MSME is going to focus on that and that could be one focus area. Uh, India is also investing a lot in a startup ecosystem promoting youths to start their own ventures and uh, so what is that one specific area which U.S. or your department will be focusing on after this MOU has been signed? Yeah, well, I mean, during my visit uh, this week, and I've had a couple days to be able to meet with many entrepreneurs, uh, micro businesses, you know, we, we know that there's huge opportunities across multiple sectors. Uh, the MOU calls for our broader engagement around expanding opportunities in the global marketplace, uh, but specifically as well, trying to focus on our women entrepreneurs. In the United States, women entrepreneurs are starting at high rates, double the rates of men. Uh, we've seen that for the last 10 years as they enter into the entrepreneurial landscape, we want to make sure there's access. And the same uh, applies here in India where inclusion is also a priority. So we've been able to uh, focus in the MOU on trying to make sure that we include opportunities for women entrepreneurs and focus uh, on best practices in both countries and how we can improve and lift up uh, our women who are so critical to community. Uh, the other area, of course, is uh, around climate change. Uh, both of our countries share an interest in trying to combat uh, global warming, ensuring that we can transition to a clean energy economy, and our small businesses and MSMEs in our countries will be a big part of ensuring that we can deliver that sustainable future. Uh, so we've also uh, focused on that specific industry as well, on, on the green economy broadly. That means making sure that our innovative startups in both of our countries have connection to be able to create the technology we need to combat climate change, but also it means just sustainable practices, making sure that our small businesses are part of the solution uh, as we fight global climate change. As India preps for a grand celebration of its 78th Independence Day, the streets of the country are brightly lit up. These are some of the monuments across uh, the country. Take a look at those visuals there. That is the capital of India for you, brightly lit up ahead of uh, the 78th Independence Day. The Prime Minister will, of course, uh, speak. This will be his first speech under Modi 3.0 and it will be an important watch. The prior president, Draupadi Murmu, has already spoken and she has said that social justice is the most important focus of the government. Time for a short break. More news and updates on the other side.